Greetings in the name of the Most High. Yahushua, the one Yahweh Elohim, God. Jah, Psalm 68. I am using my exquisite studio here, which is comprised of, and I must die, I got to get some more music on this thing. I, I don't even have my own music organized. It's terrible. I got an iPod Touch so I could do music and I just felt there's enough Wi-Fi in the world that I wouldn't really need to have the cell phone type of thing. I can Skype. And continuing on in the name of Jesus, I had a little break there. I'm trying to adjust this mic to be the right um, size, and I suppose I should just go by the waveform that's being produced. Um, if it says it's clipping, it's not necessarily distorting. The one thing we don't want is it to be too low, which we've had that in the past as well. So we're adjusting uh, it upwards, and it looks like we've kind of hit a good level here. Um, they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Amen. Have you not seen a vain vision and have you not spoken a lying divination whereas you say, the Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because you have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold, I am against you, saith the Lord God. I am against you because... Let's take it from the top. Divination. Okay. What would divination be? Could it possibly be something like this? Um, you know, you look for a sign, you have a dream, you interpret it uh, a certain way, not, say, with the Lord, trying the spirits, but you interpret it your own way, much like a... Um, a psychic would do, okay? That's divination. So the line between prophecy and being a psychic and then legalism, which is not prophecy, which also is false prophecy. A very fine line. Now, legalism, that's uh, where you have people that receive a word or they think they do or they get an, uh, they imagine something, and then they look it up in the Bible and they say, well, you see, it confirms right here. The Lord spoke to me saying, this is gonna happen on such and such a time, and look, it's confirmed right here. Um, it, it, as it was before, so it will be again. Um, the people will not heed, therefore, this is going to happen to them. Uh, all these familiar cliches, of course, have uh, scripture quotes that can be used and uh, as supporting documentation for anyone's flight of fancy. That's actually worse than being a psychic. That's actually even worse. And so the Lord says here that he is against you if that's what you do. He is against you. That doesn't mean you, you, you know, that doesn't mean you may not, you, you, you could even prosper in life and have the Lord against you, even while prospering. Uh, it would not be the first time. So the, the, the legalists will look for, uh, or Job's friends, the church system, the religion system, I should say, not church, but religion. What they'll do is they'll all argue amongst themselves and try to decide if you are real or not. And if you are, and you get the nod, they'll say, you see, because more than two of us have come together, we have established the word. And here it says this. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. And I, the Lord, am against you for that. You witnesses who are confirming the word out there, you're just really aiding and abetting the enemy. So the Lord's against you, okay? Um, so lying divination can simply be looking through the scriptures with your imagination, not being led by the Holy Spirit, and saying, this is what's happening right now. 
or this is what's going to happen. I was led here when you just popped the book open. You, 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 you didn't confirm that you were led. You got other people to say, oh, that makes sense. Yeah, he was led. And on it goes. So the preponderance of lying in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, is like 90 to 1. And, and that's why people are turned off. I can't say it any more clearly than that. It's about 90. I'm being generous. Okay, I'm being generous. You can go to anything from the Elijah list to, uh, you know, online to the Godlike Productions, which is anything but, um, uh, to all these various sites, Rapture Ready, if you will. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to name them all. I mean, I've named some big, you know, commercial places that make money. Um, I'm going to just, uh, yes, it's the wee hours. It's fisherman's hour. So I'm going to continue to have a, that sound you hear is the sound of goodness. It's the sound of Illy Espresso. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to do what, what Frankie's doing now and then go to tea because I, I do better on, on tea. And that's, I, I find it difficult to, I've got to redo a few things, you know, and that's, and, and I'm praying about it, you know, and I think, you know, the espresso thing is one, I have a, have been drinking espresso since I was, I couldn't remember, but when I was really in great shape, I was drinking tea and I like tea. I just don't like it early in the morning, you know, because it, it has tended to make me sick. I even got to the point of having non-caffeinated tea. And that's when I was really kind of on it. And I, um, although my eating habits have changed, I, um, this has been led by God. I've been led by God to cut sugar. And I've done that to the best of my ability. I've, I've had a few slip ups, but, uh, but to stay in a ketogenic uh, mode, because that um, will ensure, it, it's especially good for people that are older and it really kind of like ensures a long life because it's giving you the nutrients you need and it's not feeding the critters like if you have any kind of cancer and everybody at, at my age and older, all, all of us all men have some form of prostate cancer. There's some like, you know, whether it's impinging on, uh, you know, your, your ability to urinate or anything like that, the sex drive, all that's part of the male menopause process and it can become cancerous, not, but not if you don't feed it. See what I'm saying? So don't feed it. And those cells, those kind of cell, those those cancer cells, and whatever thing you have, whatever kind of disease, the the bad cells will all feed on. They need sugar in a low pH environment. So when you're doing um, uh, taking essential oils or uh, uh, PEOs, or what I take from uh, Peskin, which are organic uh, parent essential oils, which are basically an EFA blend. That's oxygenating the blood, right? Keeping the pH higher. And, and to, to that extent, anything you can do there um, will keep you in good stead. Um, and then if you really get desperate, I suppose, if you get all the way to like a stage four situation, um, then you're going to have to go on the baking soda technique, which is online. And um, I understand that works every time it, it's tried. So I'm kind of all into, you know, for me, it's very simple. Let's not even go there. And uh, giving up sugar was just a really kind of a no-brainer for me. It, it you know, it means when I go to Italy, uh, we will refrain <laughs> from the standard pasta. Um, but, you know, and, and it's hard because sometimes you'll overeat because you're compensating for not getting some carbohydrate. But it's, uh, but I can tell in the long run that the, the body really responds well. And like I say, I don't, you know, um, after beginning that journey of the ketogenic way i all the uh you know the uh, symptoms that i had just went away so i was like okay let's just keep it going i don't know it's really hard folks because you know you're dealing with an environment that is so toxic and for for men it's it's you know hormone wise there's too much estrogen loading and that uh will lead to prostate cancer and other things and then with women it's it's breast cancer and um and uterine, uterine cancer or tumors in, in the uterus or tumors, uh, you know, the, those kind of, um, those issues, okay? All of that or a lot of that is basically our diet, processed food, our toxic environment. It didn't used to be that way. 
I know that the um, that you know the the FDA was pushing a low fat diets, and I just have to start laughing because without fat, actually, a person would die. <laughs> you know, uh, without oils, you die. It's just like you, you have to put oil in your in your car. If you don't put oil in the car, it, it's going to die. If you if you don't uh, put oil in your system, your arteries are going to get clogged. I mean, that's the whole point. You know, the, the the kind of diet and the things that they promote around here will lead to clogging the arteries, heart attacks, cancers, all kinds of things. But it's coming from the environment, so that's where we have to address it, right? The doctor. By the time you get to the doctor, it's too late. It's got to be done holistically. You know, via if it's the environment, then you got to fix your environment. And be kind of strict about it, but not legalistic. Again, getting back to this legalism thing, the Lord hates it when we become legalistic, like we don't trust that he could put, if all I had to eat was rice, and that's not on my diet, let's say, and that's all there is, I pray to God and I'm grateful for it. You know, there's all, at the end of the day, he told us, do not fret for what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. Now, given that, if you have the option then you want to steer it the right way. But if, if all you have is what's being put in front of you, a fast food meal or whatever, you you pray over that meal. Lord, let that be uh, nutritious and I thank you and I'm so grateful for the nourishment and for the provision in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, on whatever meal, whether it's, you know, it could be a food line and that's going to be slop in the food line. Uh, it could be MREs that you've stored up in case the... Um, Something goes wrong, like if they light this fuse on the Ukraine. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but I, I, I don't want to get too far afield. I want to go back to this false prophet thing because Ezekiel, you know, um, you know, he deals with false prophets in the thirteenth chapter of, uh, but then eventually he gets to the witches, right? And um, you know, the the ones who sew the armholes and all that, and then how they basically decide who's going to be the leader of your community and who's. You know, and they decide what prophecy is and what's accurate and what isn't or who becomes approved of in the king's court. I mean, it's this sewing circle. And it's it's so accurate that it's like, I don't even, you know, I'm wondering if, why it's even legal because it's just, it's almost too accurate, you know. Um, and as we, go, as we look down here, um, uh, to wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, I would see visions of peace for her, and there is no peace, saith the Lord God. Okay, I'm reminded of one Kim Clement, who goes around as a false prophet with the approval of the, quote, church system, and he's wrong about every time he opens his mouth. He's actually wrong more than people that guess or throw, uh, or throw you know, uh, darts at a dartboard with like the news on it to see which is going to be accurate, you know, in terms of prediction. Um, he's just really bad. He's just not just a false prophet, but actually just, I mean, he's just really bad at it. And they continue to give him a pass, these blind, lost, sheeple, mind control, slave robots who say they are Christians and brethren. My friends, they are not your brethren. They need help? Yes. Maybe they become brethren at some point in the future? Yes, but they are heathens who would agree to accept a false prophet and continue in that agreement. Um, but don't, you know, we don't have to look to, uh, you know, the odd thing about Clem, Kim Clement is he's also a pretty good musician and uh, an arranger and writer of music. And I've heard his band several times. I mean, it's not my cup of tea, mind you, but he's, you know, as a musician, he's very accomplished. So he does the prophecy thing and then he does, performs music. And, um, it's too bad they don't have uh, more modern. He's, he's very kind of uh, cliched or dated in his music. But, you know, it's, it wouldn't it be interesting if they had something real going on. But to have something real, it can't be done on a TV show on cue. It can't be done in a church on cue. It's when the spirit hits, it, it, it swirls around and it, it affects all of us. And some people say, you're possessed to the devil. No, I'm... I don't know what it is, but here's, here it is. And, and you speak in that mode and then that becomes real when it's established and it can only be established on retrospect or given some time. And then people say, the Lord really moved and he lifted people up and they acted crazy. And then this prophecy started flowing out of them. Yeah. And it was not on cue. It just happened spontaneously in some situation. Now, mind you, 
You can also get caught up with a false spirit and all go crazy and fall down and scream and yell and, and act like you got the, a Pentecost thing going on there and be completely 100% false. How do you know? Because it never comes due. Uh, to wit, Kim Clement made a prophecy in 2007 that we are going to be so fabulously wealthy as a country, America, that you better invest now. I'm quoting, I'm paraphrasing and quoting. You better invest now or you are not going to be able to cash in on the greatness of America. It's just right around the corner from insane profits. You want to get in now before it's... And he said this before the crash, 2008, and before Obama. Okay? And nobody held him to account. I mean, he was like... And he went... He, he doubled down on it. He was like, yes, America is going to be the great, you know, the greatest, blah, 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 blah. And um, many of them have. You know what I mean? Many of them have doubled down on it and and they double down uh, when it doesn't come due and they say it's right around the corner trust me and then they go on and do another gig you know what I mean to to thunderous applause and to a full auditorium whereas the people of God wander in the wilderness with barely a uh, with, with having no audience and really no one listening to them and yet the ones who were obscure change the world and the ones who are celebrated destroy the world. Amen. Let that be established. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, as they say. Because that's really what's going now. The, the fact that they would accept a Kim Clement. Uh, getting it sort of reminds me of the Todd Bentley thing, although I guess because he didn't have all these tattoos, they didn't, you know... The Todd Bentley thing was like a kind of a no brainer in the sense that um, obviously it was all about being a rock star. It, you know, it, it just it's just so intoxicating the, the tent and the revival and all the people. And, you know, most people can't handle all that. It becomes a vanity, of course. And um, so, of course, I don't listen to anything. I don't read the Elijah only to the extent that, you know, the Elijah List had a little TV show and they had Kim Clement on. And then he's been in the news recently. I forget what he's predicted. But, you know, um, uh, he I don't know, something like Obama's a true believer. Some something. I don't know exactly what it is. It's not not quite as you know, I had one that, you know, I don't even know at this point where I, I said Obama's like a prodigal son. And maybe it will take a nuclear war to wake him up. I don't know. You know. I just know that people are suffering right now because of him and because of uh, the people in Washington, D.C. Far more than they are suffering because of uh, the people in Russia. Far more than they are suffering because of the people in Israel. Far more than they are suffering even because of the people in China, believe it or not. When I say suffering, I mean they're under a severe form of mind control. That basically, um, that, that strengthens this premise, uh, their knowledge, their, their, their raison d'etre, their, their uh, consciousness. That things are bad and they're going to get worse and this is the end. And this is doubled down on, and here I am with the word double down five times, uh, but this is strengthened by all the, I mean, that's what the oligarchs want you to think, that it sucks, it's getting worse. And to that extent, I just saw a movie pounding the table on this very point. It was called Osage County. It had Meryl Streep and uh, Julia Roberts and had um, um, other people in it as well. I, You know, Sam Shepard was in it. And... Uh, and uh, uh, I forget the other actor's name. Anyway, but, but so I watched it. It was a drama. And I thought, oh, that's pretty good. It's really showing the human condition and showing the dysfunctionality of families and how they can get. And, you know, the Meryl Streep character, she did a fabulous job acting, as they all did. But the, the message of the movie is life sucks. There is no hope. Jesus is a joke. There's one lamb character in there who's a, kind of the lamb of the family. And the mother insults him saying, you know, when he's a you know, full-grown man and all that. And uh, his mother con consistently insults him and says, you know, he comes over for the big family dinner. And the mother goes, hey, there's, there's no room at the uh, little kid's table or I would have put you over there. Right off the bat. 
you know, calling him, insulting him in that way. Um, you know, in a way that I'm sure you're all too familiar with out there. So they had that character in there. And actually, he was, you know, a gentle spirit. And they just called him a loser. He said, this is the only guy that gets fired from, like, you know, the counter at Pep Boys or something. And it's like, yeah, you know, I understand that sometimes there's a spirit in somebody that's not what the world likes. And they get a job at something like that. They don't do anything wrong and they get fired. Uh, this guy didn't do anything wrong. That's the thing. He, he was um, a mensch. You know, he was uh, basically uh, a very uh, uh, in earnest. And you see him getting off like a Greyhound bus to start with. He doesn't even have a, a car. And it's like when you see the way they treat him, how mean they are. And then they're all narcissistic and they're taking their drugs. And Meryl Streep, the, the matriarch, is popping pills. Um, the men have kind of moved on to other women, you know. And so it becomes these women commiserating and just, you know, that, that they used to be pretty and they're not anymore and they're just lamenting and they're d disgusting and gross. And, um, you know, the writing is basically to reinforce the notion that, you know, basically this dysfunctional, fa there, was no, there was no light and no hope. You go see the movie. I recommend it if you're a fan of acting and, and all that. It's like a play. It's like it should have been actually, a, maybe it was a play. I don't know the history of the, of the piece. But I can just say this, that, you know, there, there was no light and no hope. There was no better day after they resolved their differences. After the woman, the matriarch, she was abandoned by all her kids, you know, sacrificed everything because she grew up poor to give those kids an education, everything. Then they all moved away and leaving her alone. And now she's facing cancer and popping, you know, Vicodin and Valium and uh, Oxycontin and, you know, like that. And then just speaking her mind, which we're all supposed to sit down and go, oh, wow, this woman's really been through a lot. She's really wise. She is not wise. Whoever wrote that is an absolute fool. Whoever made that movie up, uh, Harvey Weinstein. Well, that's a no brainer. He's an absolute idiot. So here we go. Once again with the Weinstein. Unable. Unable. Weinstein is going to tout the party line of Obama and the oligarchs and what it is, which is the mind control meme that things suck and that there's no reason for hope and there's no reason to be happy. Period. Everything ends up with cancer and bad and disease and all. And that's what they, the social engineers want you to believe and are spreading this. And Weinstein's, of course, he's a propagandist of the first order for the progressive movement. They did a study where they felt that people were too happy and that's, that's actually a form of mental illness and they don't want people to have hope or happiness. That's not good for the society. It makes it more difficult to govern. So now the movies are a uh, gray area. There is no hope. In other words, it's back to the time of the anti-hero of the 1970s, where the criminal is the hero. So now here we are, you know, and, and uh, you know, the, the most degraded of all is more heroic. Okay, so here we are in the time of the movies that should have some ray of sunshine. After going through that horrible drama, um, you know, I liken it to like a, a lousy, watered-down version of Long Day's Journey Into Night by Eugene O'Neill, which was brilliant and genius and actually did have... The hope was that the men would get away from the matriarch, that they would, you know, somehow get out of the slavery they were in as they were circling around her, her played by... In the, in the movie, it was played by uh, Catherine Hepburn. And, and uh, that was probably the role of her lifetime, playing the drug-addicted just like Meryl Streep was trying to kind of emulate that. But even in that, there was some hope in, of freedom. You know, that this bondage of being tied to this, you know, Jezebel, uh, the men had to kind of, you know, wake up and unconform themselves. Because by being her satellite, they were thus ritually conformed to the world. Yet she was dragging them all down and everyone down with her in a downward spiral. And they couldn't get away, you see. Sound familiar? You think Eugene O'Neill was just writing about a single family? Or do you think like Shakespeare, Eugene O'Neill had a bigger goal in mind? What was he writing about? Well, I know, well, that was my mother. <laughs> so I know exactly what he was writing about. 
He was writing about the slavery of the world. He was writing about the women who sew armholes. He was writing about the false prophets. He was writing, writing about how we agree with compromise and, you know, uniformity and conformity in order to get along, to go along, so we can have some pathetic life that leads then to destruction, but at least there's a temporary respite while we stick another vein in our arm, or we stick another needle in our vein, rather. All right? Now, I've been here warning, now going on a dozen years, publicly, all over the place, and I'm here to warn you that if we don't do something about this situation, you will see the specter of a nuclear World War III as a result of this situation that Harvey Weinstein is pushing. I could directly indict him, but I'd have to indict a whole lot of people, and I am through this podcast. Because, but, but yes, Lord, I understand. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's ignorant. He's just, you know, he's just kind of gets with what the trend is and he goes with it, right? Because he's a businessman. He wants to make moves. I got nothing personally against him. Um, you know, I don't know the man. I just know what he produces. And, and I, I understand the motives behind his um, um, uh, activism for the Obama administration, which is basically all about what I'm talking about. It's all about... Um, leading to this war as a reset button for Zbigniew and buddies um, so they can, uh, you know, not have to tell people that the money's gone and they can reset the, the button, they can depopulate a la Bill Gates and everyone's happy. Funny, I went to school with Bill Gates. Isn't that awful? I know now. <laughs> I know that what I know now. Maybe I, I don't think I ever really mistreated him. I guess he was maybe a year or two underneath me, but uh, I believe he did get picked on. He was, you know, and I think this is all his revenge. At that time, it was, uh, the Harvard school was a military school and uh, soon, to, soon to be uh, changed. And I know he's a big donor over there. He, so he's donates now. Then it's become a, when it, they threw out, it became a progressive school as a prep. So you can go to Yale and you can go to, you know what I mean? So you can really be indoctrinated the wrong way and become a part of the problem rather than the solution. And, um, I watched most of my classmates. Sorry if the shoe fits, if the foo, no shoe fits, um, go that way. And, um, they, you know, Nazis one and all, you know, they just, they just became conformed citizens and they went to the right schools and they did the right things and they have the right job and the, you know, the right amount of children and live in the right place and all that. And now at long last, they're all falling apart, you know, save for maybe a few who are still buoyed up by having success in the world. So they have some place to go and show up to and that, but if it wasn't for that, God help them. You know, they made a mockery of God. Actually, at Harvard School, there was a, it was Episcopalian school to start with, and there was a chapel. It was required that you wear your uniform and you go to chapel every Thursday, and I remember that. And um, there were some people in there that were really, you know, choir boys that were and, and acolytes and things that were really dedicated and I just I always envied that you know and I it just took a lot of years for for God to beat that rebellious spirit out of me but yes I I thought that structure was much more preferable to what happened where the um, progressives threw out the military and then they said you know they kind of did this whole progressive left-wing thing and put on a lot of left-wing propaganda there to prepare people for the Ivy League okay you have to understand that when you see them talking about becoming a Muslim, you know, people in the Pentagon, you know, like the, or the CIA, the guy, or, you know, Brenner, right? Or you see this kind of political correctness happening. It's because they were indoctrinated to it a long time ago. This was the, it's the left movement, make no mistake about it, and most Republicans are leftists. Just understand that, please. So it's a left movement. It's the old communist movement 
of total totalitarian and global enslavement for the population and the taking away of small business and resources so that only the oligarchs control it. That's what you're looking at. And now they've lost the information war. It's, it, they're not losing. They lost. Done. So now plan B, they didn't, right? They saw that in Syria. The information war was lost in Syria. Let's note historians, I'm calling it, I may be the only one. The information war was lost in Syria. Then they had to regroup and now they're going for a, uh, the Hail Mary pass, the nuclear lob. Okay? The nuclear lob, because if they can't win, well, they're going to fire all the weapons. You see, they're not going to lose the information war. They're not going to lose. Alex Jones is not going to win the day. You know, they'll make sure that they do something really awful to teach these people a, a lesson on who really runs things around here. And these people all have one single thing in common. Hatred of God and worship of Satan and they're on and they run the satanic kingdom and they're not about to be shown up. Now, God has something else to say because as you know in Psalm 2, he laughs at them. And them, we're talking about them. This is them. He laughs. I'm telling you the absolute truth. There is no debate here. This is the truth, period. There is no kind of like gray area here. Oh, well, it's a little bit, you know, they're trying to do the right thing. It may not be all bad, you know, and people like Bill Gates, you're selling him short. He doesn't have all bad motives. He's trying to help the world, not hurt it. And Zbigniew Brzezinski, he's trying to reorganize the, the, uh, the country so that everybody can be prosperous. And Barack Obama just wants to raise all boats and have everyone have an equal chance and, and have equality and equality and equality and everyone have equality. And so he's got to push some people down and to bring the others up so that you know that finally at long last we'll have justice for the black people and the brown people and the indians and don't forget the indians we got to you know we got to destroy what was here so that they can rise and here's what happens they destroy what was here and they the indians the native americans which are not the na original natives by the way there are people here before them who the tribes but let's not even go into that if this thing is destroyed, they go down with it. The black man goes down with it. The Asians go down. The whites go down. All the races go down because it's not even about equality. It's only about um, a few dirty, perverted individuals who prey upon the innocent, who want to have a nuclear party so they can get their rocks off. And at the end of the day, it's just that's all it's about. Just that. Isn't that sick? I mean, if you want to know the truth, you can't handle it because it's really on that level. It's on that visceral level. They don't see anything spiritual except for the witchcraft and, you know, portals into other dimensions that, that are based on limitation of the occult. Okay? And it all goes to their orgasmic pleasure because, you know, after a while, having sex with a person doesn't quite do it you know what I mean I can just imagine the uh you know the can you I can just imagine how much fun sitting behind a screen uh with your drone while you're about to take out a bunch of innocent people and how that would get you off you know what I mean if you develop a taste for it that's and then then after a while that's the only thing that will get you off I mean people won't do it anymore masturbation alone wouldn't do it you've got to you've got to be right killing something in order to and that's how bad they are. I and mean, that's how bad it is. Right? I mean, people, um, you know, when I've said things like this in the past, I'm being very general, you know. My first exposure to people uh, whacking off to, uh, to blood violence was a movie that, I, that I, somehow I went to and I, that I was a little kid and I had to ride the bus up to Sunset and see a... It might have been at one of the theaters that was falling apart on Hollywood Boulevard, and it, they, it was like theater of blood or some kind of thing where all it was was just people getting their throats slit and their arms cut off, and it was just, you know, one kind of effect after another. It had no plot. And there were the raincoat guys, you know, stuffing the theater. 
and they're all whacking off and I'm watching this. I'm going, and I didn't understand. I was too young. I wasn't even really to puberty yet. So I didn't understand. I, I felt very frightened. I, I felt uh, horrified. It, uh, it horrified me that there was all this, you know, movement going on at people having their heads and hands and feet cut off or whatever, you know, I can't remember now what it was, but I remember there was, I'm not even going to go into it, but I remember it vividly and I had to get up and leave because I was afraid because I didn't understand why. I mean, I could understand um, them at a, at a porno film like the Pink Pussycat or something, you know, which was down the street in West Hollywood. I could understand them going in there and, and doing it with that, you know, because that was the kind of the norm or going into one of these, you know, uh, porno bookstores and going into, a, you know, the video booth and going at it there. I mean, I can definitely understand that, you know, it's, it's, it's as hard as that would be to, for, for a soul to bear. Um, but this idea of having sex with others being dismembered and having that be an appetite for that. Now, just imagine, now just imagine. These were just off the street perverts, right? And they're perverts. Let's make no mistake. These are not good people, okay? They're the same people that prey on children and everything else. You know, so they need that extreme thing. Well, just imagine when you get really powerful up there in the halls of power and you have access to all this stuff and it's okay to do it at any time. You know what I mean? That's part of the reason you're there so that you can have sex with a thing, right? So, and do whatever kind of sex you like. And, and never be busted for anything unless you step out of line. And then they bring out the videotape or the whatever they have on you if you don't obey them. You know, it's a form of slavery, right? You could just imagine how perverted you could get. Because, see, it's all progressive. You go down that pathway of, you know, the magazines and then the peep shows. And then, you know, it leads eventually to that, right? You need more and more and more and more to get off. I'm just speaking for men now because I know the way men operate and I know, I know how, how it works. So it becomes an addiction, but then the, the, the addiction needs more. It need, then eventually they go to bondage sites and then eventually they go to snuff films. I mean, that's, it just go, that's exactly the progression. Starts with innocent porn, you know, looking at boobs, let's say, and then it eventuates and if you don't do something about it, it can lead all the way to that point. And um, so just imagine with absolute power corrupting absolutely, people that are very powerful, they can have anything they want. Kids, this, that, violence, people, you know, um, you know, enemies being, uh, you know, having their throat slitting from, you know, you, you know, you can, now you can see all that on YouTube. All I'm saying is, you know, if a person isn't in check, it doesn't have a firm relationship with God when they become a leader, if they're not like Joseph, and they get into that environment if there's a lot of peer pressure, like, oh, come on, just go along with it. See, it's fun, right? And then the next thing you know, they're all in it together, uh, supporting each other, covering for each other, doing massive criminality, importing drugs, exporting drugs, killing masses of people, sending NSA uh, snipers after private citizens, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all because this thing has not been in check. In other words, the Lord God was not there. All that needed to be done for the society to have continued was to have the Lord God in, in view and to do things the right way. And, you know, and to not allow any illegality like that or any perversion openly in that manner. And if someone has a problem in that manner, instead of everyone joining in, that, he, that person needs to be told, you, you either get over that or get some help or get out of here. There's no place for you here in government. There's no place for you here in the kingdom. There's no place for you here. You're going to bugger children and, and just because you're powerful and you can get away with it. There's no place for you here. And without that mechanism, which isn't there because this nation turned against God, without God, the mechanism's not there. So that I can safely make a secure, sure word of prophecy that if it goes unchecked, it will be the end, not just of this country, but of Western civilization with a fiery uh, finale. And the people responsible, not just you and me, but yes, to a certain degree, we are. I mean, at least I'm doing this. I'm, I'm trying, you know, I'm trying, you know. I mean, the idea that I would be chosen in some way 
or selected or what, however I came to the internet and to speaking. Um, I'm like the last person, you know what I mean? Uh, it seems to me that this, this should have been handled at the pulpit, not me, leaving it to people like me who just are out there in the wilderness, you know, the wandering poet. Why, why should it be left to me? Why at long last, at the end of this civilization, am I the guy who's having to, and you know, when I say I, I mean, you know, I don't mean I, vanity I, I mean, you know, I, collective I, you know, whoever else is out there. I don't know. I don't have time to watch uh, other people and listen to other people. Trish does. But I haven't been able to um, tolerate talk radio because, uh, quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I don't like to, um, I don't think it's good for me to um, get angry. And every time I listen to talk radio, whether it's Michael Savage or it's Alex Jones or it's, I can't tolerate Fox News at all. Um, you know, I don't listen to the left wing stuff. I, every once in a while I do just because I like, I, you know, it's kind of fun. But I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Mike Malloy, I really used to love him when he was here. And I'd call in and bother, I would just bother him. But, you know, it's serious now. It's not funny anymore. It's not funny anymore. So... When I'm hearing, you know, Michael Savage talk about his ratings now, Grady's doing, I just want to puke. I'm sorry. I, lo I love the guy. I just, I, but I just can't take it. Okay. I just, as I'm like, I remember when Frankie would get to the point where he couldn't take it and he would just be just like that. Like if, if there's just a little drop of it, I mean, ah, 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 I can't take it. Whereas uh, Trish can go on and, and, and I ask her what's going on. And that's. Because in the entire time that I've been speaking, I've watched almost everything come to pass that I was warning about. And if it all came to pass, you and I wouldn't be here. We don't. But uh, why should I have any belief at all that that won't happen? Because since everything else has happened, isn't it logical that we will go to the final solution? And if that's the case, well, at least somebody had some moral outrage, you know, even though I'm not the most moral person, I mean, in behavior I, mean, I have my weaknesses you know I, I wish i was more perfect like a saint like gandhi or something but it, you know well he didn't believe in jesus well you know but i have a mother Teresa. then i don't know whatever whatever you know somebody that has no name then fine uh to me saints are um not really any particular religion you know i uh, i don't listen to people that say jesus 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 i do oh you, you, hey you, that's a saint all right um no i don't um i don't try at this point there are no Christians as far as I'm concerned. You know, I mean, if there are, there, you know, you run into one here and there. Or, it's not Christians. That's, that's a, a, I just look for like-minded spirits, you know. But I mean, I have a firm faith in Jesus the Lord. And, you know, I, someone sent me the other day a, a thing. It was a Muslim propaganda thing that Jesus was never crucified and that's a big story. He was never crucified. He was married to Magdalene. They had children. They became the Merovingian uh, kings of of France and blah, blah, blah. And then he went to the East and he, and he educated the Tibetans and they kept a record of it. His name was Isa, blah, 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 blah. I've been through all that. And it's all, it's all just, I, you know what? I don't even care about the historical record, but don't, I don't want that kind of propaganda because I, ooh, the smell of that is, it's, oh boy, the spiritualist and occultist. Hello, you didn't fool me. You people that produced that, I know just exactly who you are, right? Theosophical, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. The um, Manly Hall, yep. Yeah. Oh God, I got your number, man. So they're the kind of people that put that video out. So I'm not going to listen to that either. So there are no Christians, there are no churches, there are no, um, you know, there is no, uh, there's nothing unless it appears to me as being something. And that's a day-to-day -day fluid fluctuation. I may not see in this desert of existence we're in, all, my, my job right now is just to tell you, you know, uh, and you know, what's going on. And right now what's going on is this, and I said there'll be some surprises, and there will be, and it's kind of a slow descent. But right now, the plan is to, um, I'm just trying not to say it with an expletive. That's why you're hearing a silence. Look, they want to nuke the crap out of this place. 
so they can reset the financial thing and, and set up a new civilization. Then they want to do genetic engineering to put together a third uh, alternative um, race. And, and beyond that, it's a bionic a machine race. And uh, so the DNA is just the beginning of it. Um, that has nothing to do with the, uh, look, here's, here's what I got yesterday. I, I'm a, it's never going to be linear here because spirit doesn't talk that way. So here's what's happening. We are like cattle. Okay. And you saw the way that at the Bundy ranch, they, they, they treated the cattle, right? You saw that they basically, got, you know, they can fly around in helicopters, get some, get some and bring out the 50 cows and just mow them all down. They don't give a damn. Voila, that's us. We're the cattle. And the, the, the Bundy situation is a perfect um, example. We're on their land, they think. And unless uh, we are removed and put in line and put into place, they're going to mow us all down. And that's exactly where we are. And that's who we are. We're cattle and chattel. We're slaves, but we're looked at as cattle. And the future doesn't need us because it's going to be a new rollout of a different species. So therefore, you're SOL. And believe me, it, it may have been the stuff of science fiction, but it's a new species. Uh, we've seen them. You've seen them. Like the aliens, they're part of that. You know, they, 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 they have, uh, they're able to go in and out of time in any kind of place on the timeline and all that. And, you know, the timeline's been manipulated. Like, you know, thank God Yahweh himself is a person who has us as his beloved, and he's not going to let us be their slaves. But I think he had to dip us into this situation so he could glorify himself maximally, which he does by rescuing us. And that's basically the, the, the love relationship we have. You see. And us is not just flesh and blood. So, because we love the Lord, you know. We love God. We love the one who created it all. We don't love the earth. We don't love Gaia. We don't love the, you know, the, the keep town trying to download, uh, you know, the dead from the astral plane down into a baby through tra uh, trauma-based uh, mind control and abuse. We're not doing that. We don't love the, uh, the sisterhood who runs things in the name of dirt and blood and bodily fluids and whatever else and, and whatever other forces they can harness and they can harness them. And I've been a, I've been the target of the, some of that harnessing. And ouch, boy, I'll tell you. And I said, Lord, you know, that hurts. And he goes, yeah, you're damn right. It hurts. They can hurt you. That's why people cower. That's why they don't say anything because they see how it's really spooky. It's global. You start thinking the wrong thoughts, pretty soon you go to work. Next thing you know, everyone's got the evil eye on you. How'd that happen? You don't wanna mess with that. So you duck down, put your head in the sand and just try to get through it to your retirement. But there is no, re see the difference now is there is no retirement. There is no pension, there is no money. We're living on a, a, a thread day to day. You know, I'm trying to um, make the best of it. And, and you know, I have um, assets and investments and things. I'm trying to, you know, make good decisions. And, you know, like I have a business, you know, and I'm trying to, you know, keep a positive attitude toward it and everything. But I, I'm also aware and, and, and being a good steward. And I'm, I'm trying my, my best to do that. But I can, you know, and, 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 uh, and my partner's doing the same thing, you know, and we're both God-fearing. So that's good. But the, the, the problem we have here is that, um, is that this is all against the backdrop of something that's really kind of depressing. It kind of takes the wind out of your sails. It's like, well, why even try? And the, the, the American spirit, you know, of entrepreneurialism and being a good steward and being innovative, you know, that's what we've tried to do, but it's getting harder. It's almost more like we're just kind of ducking. And we're not coming up with new stuff because with the regulations out there, we can't do much. So, you know, so I can empathize with all of you who have jobs and businesses and uh, concerns where you have to be like a leader and you have to be, um, you know, and all those things, you know, you have to be, uh, now hopefully you have your passions, you know, I mean, my, my, 
I don't know. I have no goal. I'll just be honest with you. I don't really, I never have really had a goal and I don't have one now, but I mean, I kind of do what's in front of me to do, you know, and I just take it as it comes. And that's what I've had to do over the last for, I don't know how long. And, you know, people just really can't stand that about me. You know, I know my, my family, they got so mad. They just thought I was a bum, you know, cause I was just kind of like, uh, I would just, I, and that's what I want to advocate, <laughs> being more like me. I want to advocate this. In other words, I think we have to take it day by day. Uh, the time of planning. Is there anyone out there planning something? Like you're planning a big push. You're planning a big... You, how about you musicians? Are you planning the big the big CD push? CDs are obsolete. You, you, you're living in the past. There is no CD. There is no DVD. There is no point of doing anything unless you do I mean to me it's it's all becoming quite clear what the purpose of communication and and poetry especially is very powerful you know this is like poetry this is just like it's free verse here that's what it is it's really free verse poetry really gets me thinking deep does it you if i just had to read the news i would not think deeply about these issues because it all goes to a certain philosophical deepness that transcends the news, that goes to a spiritual deepness that transcends the flesh. And if I'm not getting there with the news, very linear and all mind control based and, and, and fear based and um, horrible, horrible, these people are horrible, you have no idea. They just write what they're told to write, okay? And they always have. And it's always been that way in America. And that's what probably, in the end, brought it down. Um, every president is selected, as you know. There are, are no elections, and there haven't been. And so I just find it, um, you know, who are they behind the curtain? Who select the presidents? Um... Oh, I know a little something about that. They are, um, they think they know everything. And, you know, actually, at this point, at the end of the day, they're really, they're weak. And they're lost. And they're depressed. And they don't know what to do. Well, my friend, if that's you, you're going to have to understand that none of the things that you've built, and none of your crowns, and none of the, None of your castles and none of your civilizations and none of your artworks and none of your music and nothing that you've done means anything. It's meaningless. That's why you're depressed. It's vanity, Ecclesiastes 12. Vanity, I tell you. All is vanity. The only thing that's real, and this is not real, your castle is not real. Your yacht is not real. Your planes are not real. It's, it's, they're there, but they're secondary to reality. Oh, Lord, I can't see what's going to happen to them, I wonder. What, oh, what is going to happen to them now? I mean, I know that you've, you've seen these verses a million times, but... Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still sought, taught the people knowledge, yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. That's what preachers are supposed to do, and teachers and preachers. The preacher sought to find acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words uh, of the wise are as goads. And as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished. Of making books there is no end, and much study is a weariness of the flesh. Let us hear the whole conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for that's the whole duty of man. For God shall bring to every work into judgment, every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Every secret thing. I have no need of, of finding out what these people do in their secret societies that determine who's going to be president or who's going to be at war or whatever. 
I have no interest in what they're interested in. I have no interest in their parties, in their, in their minds, in anything unless and until they get straightened out. They get out of their slavery and out of, because all I'm talking to then is a robot. So I have no interest in it. It's not being disrespectful. It's what, if they ever show up again in the, in the carcass that's their body, then, then we can have a conversation, but they're not home. And that's what you have to realize. It's, it's running by itself. None of these people can turn it off. No one can. You see, the people of America, the part they had in this, is that they turned against God. And even with the Syria thing, with the specter of a World War III there, they didn't repent. I'm here to tell you that. So now it's ramped up. I remember it, it, there had to be appreciate. Nobody appreciated it. We prayed for intervention. We received it. I prophesied about it. And accurately, I didn't even think, I thought I was, you know, just maybe I was false, but then it came due. So I was blown away, but no one else was. Nobody got it. We were given a respite. My God, it wasn't appreciated. It was not appreciated. So the human race has voted for suffering and sorrow and pain and anguish and death. And that's what they're pining for through their actions and whatever, decadence or the, 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 the age of narcissism. Um, you know, I can take a selfie and put it up there, you know, because I have to. That's the only way you're going to see my me as a composer, as a man. I take crazy pictures and, you know, I'm, I'm like a poet with images too, you know. I'm not going to, I'm not putting on any air like I'm good or I'm, you know, oh, wow, I'm really normal, you know, hey, you know, you listen to me, I'm normal, you know, no. I'm going to do whatever I feel like doing in that regard. See, there's a point where when we try to please other people or please who we think the Lord is or what the Lord wants or when it becomes an externalization like that, where we please no one and we put ourselves in bondage. This is amazing. And then we don't live our own lives. We live what we think God wants us to do and forget that we exist and that he created us and we're insulting his actual creation by our attitude of following him. Isn't that something? No, it doesn't take much. I mean, if, you know, stop killing children, don't drone people, uh, don't celebrate throwing God out of the platform, um, you know, stop with the... Um, uh, the wanderlust of sex, it doesn't lead anywhere. Stop going to Thailand for the kids or to, to, for the, going to Morocco for the boys. It doesn't lead to anything. Um, stop private dirty little wars where you take you know, people's money and, and invest it in Iraq or Afghanistan or all, that, all this kind of stuff that was a drain and a waste on everybody. Don't try to gin up the war machine again right now and go into this big time war and everybody lying. I mean, you know, I told you yesterday, and I'll say it again. Hear me now. Washington is a cesspool right now, but then so is the EU and so is NATO. Um, you know, I'm not saying Russia's any angel, but I'm just saying it's a dirty little war. It's a dirty little enterprise. And, and everyone feels it's dirty and profane. And they're trying to blame alternative media, but the stench is everywhere. Everyone can see the emperor's naked. Everyone can see it's a dirty little thing. It's not, there's no honor. The U.S., I, give me a little credit. When was this predicted? The U.S. would not win. They can't win. No moral authority. Right? It's all private and dirty. I see the Washington Monument, the entire pool there. Maybe one day that will just turn to blood or a blood red. The uh, reflecting pool that reflects the monument to the gods of the oligarchs, I guess. I know one thing, if you don't belong, you know, as you saw an Eyes Wide Shut with Stanley Kubrick, that was pretty accurate. If you don't belong, they let you know. And they'll let you know what you have to do to belong. But um, belonging to that little club is a sure way to wind up burning in hell. You can do this Billy Graham dance all you like, but Billy Graham cannot save you. 
presidents and fools. He can't save you. You know, putting on a show and going to church so the cameras can see you isn't going to save you. What you're doing back there in the back rooms, you know, God will bring that into judgment. Those secret things are the things that God is. He's right there with you while you do all that. Can you imagine seeing yourself on a giant video screen, you know, at some point in your life and replaying all those things you've done? And then he, and then when you say you're so righteous and you can't wait to go to heaven, and then he replays all these dirty little secrets, how are you going to feel then? Not only that, but all the people who truly have prophetic gifts, they all see it anyway. So it's not hidden. Ezekiel wasn't the only one who saw behind that door things that you shouldn't even know about. Things I, frankly, turn my stomach. I, They turn this whole world into, you know, the, the, these small group of people. What are there, hundreds of them? They turn it, the whole world into a horror movie for their own entertainment. I think it's just, it's terrible. So I'm asking the Lord for another intervention of peace. I'm asking the Lord to bring peace because the majority of the people, and there are enough people that are the Lord's, just like it was in Syria. And I'm sorry they didn't wake up all, but, uh, you know, fear is what wakes them up. And right now, because of the propaganda and mind control, people feel lousy about their country, lousy about their future, lousy about their jobs, lousy about the prospects for a, all every, anyone's doing is, is playing defense, ducking for cover, trying to get through another day, another week, trying to, to get some sunshine, the light at the end of the tunnel. And we're all feeling that very same thing. I don't care what you believe in terms of religion or God or whatever. You're feeling that very thing I just said. And that is a result of the propaganda and mind control being foisted upon us by the likes of, you know, Hollywood and um, advertising. And it's all subtle. It's all laid in there subliminally to make you believe that things are really, you know, there is no God. There is no, okay, the, 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 the show, the following, they got another season. It was just supposed to, it was a lark show. They were only supposed to have one season. Now they're into the third season about a, a cult leader, psychopath who wants to, he believes killing people is the right thing to do. And it really helps people to kill them. Okay. Kevin Bacon stars in it, along with this British guy that plays the, the monster, um, and, and I've watched it for three seasons now. And then eventually took on the, he, he became, a, he said no religion without, he became a cult leader of religion people. And he told them no redemption without blood. So go out and kill people because that redeems them. And then they'd go out and do it. Uh, and then finally the hero of the story, uh, played by Kevin Bacon, who's the, who's the cop who's on the, who's trying to, you know, find the killer and take him down. When finally he's confronted about God, he goes, there is no God. And then the next thing after he proclaims there is no God is he teams up with the psycho killer. Now they're like a buddy team. And then now uh, that's what we go into next season for the finale. Now, what does that tell you? There is no God and you might as well team up. It's, it's okay to kill people because that redeems them. And no one bats an eye at the moral uh, lack of moral integrity of this piece. Nobody bats an eye. Am I the only one that sees it? It's not just horror, it's indoctrination. In other words, life is cheap, it's okay to kill. No big deal, just like any other sin. It actually redeems people. There's a lot of people that shouldn't even be alive today. You do them a favor by taking them out. And, you know, if your leaders are thinking that way about you, it, you know, rather than have them suffer pain, they go up in a nuclear holocaust. No one knows that anywhere. They don't know we stole all the money. They don't know that all their jobs would have ended. They would have been in poverty along food lines. It's more humane to do it this way. And I'm doubling down on this because I'm sorry, but that's... Yeah, many of them, I can see them now thinking, how does Zeph know that? Uh, nobody told me anything. Put it that way. If I know it because of a supernatural reason, then you better get on your knees before the Almighty Lord because obviously that's my only source. Obviously. Would the leaders 
the rulers of the earth, and there is no democracy, so it's all rulers of the earth, okay? So would the rulers of the earth decide it's more humane than letting them know the bad news about the derivatives and the, and the financial situation? We just have a war, blame it on Russia, and everyone's good to go. Well, they, they all die, and they're better off for it. Rather, Would you rather see them dead and their children starving or cleanly taken out? Wouldn't it be much more humane to just have a nuclear war. Wouldn't that be the best thing for everyone? I know you that's sending chills down your spine because you know what I know now, that that's very plausible, that that conversation probably is being had over and over again. That debate, what's more humane, having them face, you know, trying to kill them through the environment, you know, causing a lot more cancer and all this stuff, or just kind of, you know, hitting the reset button, getting on with our new world, whatever it is, with our new race and our new species of machines, so we can go off to the whatever and have the singularity and have this great time. And, you know, they serve their time. They serve their point. They, the cattle of the world, they, they did the work. They, we, we, we siphoned all the money off of them. And uh, they, they made us very wealthy. Well, we don't really need them anymore. And, you know, instead of pulling the plug financially, let's just, you know, have them think it's a war and they're doing their patriotic duty and there's no harm in that and they can feel good about it. And uh, it's win-win for everybody. I can actually make that case. So if I can make that case, you can just imagine them making the case. So um, while everybody else is, you know, talking about all kinds of other stuff, this is what's going on. And um, there is no winning America back or the world civilization. This is the end of Western civilization. It's got nothing to do with America. Okay? It's, it's, uh, it's bigger than that. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's cute when people are talking about getting the country, you know, and people waking up and the, you know, the military is going to come to the rescue. No, no they're not. They're not coming to anyone's rescue. They're, they're, they're fighting behind the scenes with the good guys versus the bad guys. And there's a lot of good guys in the military. And I have news for you. There's a lot of good guys in law enforcement. But all you see on TV is the, the, the thugs. I've been treated very well here in New Mexico and it's got a bad reputation. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I think, um, you know, the idea that it's lousy, that the, the, the cops are, are brutal people, the people are being brutalized. You better stay in your homes and not make a fuss. I think all that's propaganda. I think all that is shaping and control. Shaping human behavior and shaping human consciousness. Harvey Weinstein put that Osage County out there for one purpose. To make people think life is lousy and not worth living. The guy that committed suicide had the best uh, deal of all of them. I would play by the Sam Shepard character. Yeah, I'd met Sam Shepard just briefly in the parking lot at Whole Foods, of all places. He had a Kentucky license plate on his Suburban. He was missing a tooth. He was asking me about my truck, and I had the dogs in there. And I, I said, well, I can't get the dogs. I didn't let on like, you're Sam Shepard. My gosh, I used to read your plays when I was in college, and we, we all, I wanted to be a playwright just like you, you know, when I grew up. And... <laughs> Uh, I didn't have that conversation because my life didn't really go that way. So that would have been disingenuous. Plus, I, you know, I try not to draw attention if I'm talking to a celebrity to the fact that they're famous. But anyway, he's pretty famous. And, uh, but he was just a regular guy, you know. That's what I liked about him. He was just, you know, basically had his suburban from Kentucky. Obviously, he has horses and stuff. And he wanted to know if my truck could pull a horse trailer and whether the dogs would like it in the back. And I said, no, nope, they... I've tried to get them to go, and they want to ride in the cab. They don't want to ride in the back. So I think I, I tuned him out of the idea of getting it. But he liked the truck. He liked the, you know, sort of the ballsiness of the truck as opposed to a kind of a, a Suburban. Uh, you could tell he was sort of, but he couldn't figure out how to make it work because he, with his dogs, he can put them in the back of the Suburban. You know, they get in and they can go way to the back or anywhere, you know, uh, and in a truck, the cabin is closer. The suburban is a much bigger area. So, anyway, he was just like he is on the screen, and like a lot of the characters he plays, he was, 
you know, he, I guess one thing I could say about him that, uh, you know, he's a nice person and he looks troubled to me. Like the world weighs on him heavily. You know, I don't know what he's thinking about. I don't know where he's at, but I just know that I can tell when there's a person who has a conscience and it's weighing on them heavily. He's a good guy, you know, but he's caught up in something he doesn't quite understand, maybe. And it's weighing on him. I can tell it's, it's like, huh, I'm not the only troubled soul here in the parking lot. Everybody else is, is acting like a chicken with their heads cut off of how great this, this Obama is and what a great, wonderful world we've got now that we've got, you know, a black man in his president who's a, who's a Democrat. Isn't that wonderful? And they're just all zippy and cheery. And now I, you go there and it's like a morgue. Everyone's got long faces and they're looking down. And that whole liberal dream is gone because they were just used... For a, and now they see their guy, um, who's half black and half white, Obama, is uh, seems to be as big a warmonger as John McCain or Lindsey Graham. <laughs> so they're like, these are people that, you know, protested against nukes and against war and against all that stuff. And here you've got a guy in there who just can't wait to get another war going. And um, it's it, he was out there yesterday pushing the Ukraine war. And wanting to get us to, you know, they're trying to like start with getting some weapons delivered. And then after that, you know, we're going to have to send our troops over there. But it's NATO, so it's okay. And you can imagine right now we're having a Cold War sorties going on where you're having dog fights in the sky and people getting killed that are not being reported on the news. And the whole deal. And what's so bizarre is that Russia has the moral high ground. You know, not saying they're perfect or that, 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 you know, I'm just saying that in this case, the war is a private, dirty little war for George Soros, who put an illegal coup together, using your tax dollars to do their private, dirty little thing in the Ukraine and put in neo-Nazis because Soros serves the Nazis. Remember, he was a Nazi collaborator back in the day. So he's trying to get the Nazis in again. And being a Jew is really hilarious because here he is, a Jew who's tied hip and thigh with the Nazis. And on top of all that, uh, you got Obama defending the private coup, saying yesterday these words, it's a legitimate, duly elected government. We can't let this happen. Robot, automaton, empty suit, a crazy person, psychotic, whatever you want to say about him. Straight out lies every time. It's unbelievable. Just a pathetic, awful individual. Just a terrible human being all through and through just like his predecessors, all. Because they're all beholden, you know, to the beast, to that thing behind the scenes you can't see, to the thing that says you, Mr. and Mrs. America, are slaves and always have been. And we just gave you propaganda to think you were doing your own thing. But you served us well. Now your time is over. We have to take you down now. So this is the best way to do it. Therefore, if no one's going to blame Obama or Hillary Clinton or anything. It's Russia's fault. Beautiful, yes? Uh, gets the job done, and they don't come after him with the pitchforks. Mazel tov. What are we going to do here? Are you going to let the mind... Can, can you, you know, if this is the truth, what I'm saying, can you imagine... Spinning it out, the, 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 the common rhetoric out there. If this is the, just the bedrock of truth, if this is just the basic truth, you know, more or less, right? I mean, I mean I, I'm not there. I'm just, just giving you the riff, you know. But if this is it, I'm not saying it is absolute truth. I'm saying, let's say it is. Can you just imagine what it would be like if, like, they work for the new, who work for the news media know what I'm saying is the truth, but then they're reporting something else? What kind of a human being that would be? No soul, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody home. Nothing left. And if there's enough people like that, then would it not stand to reason that you would lose everything? They, they are, you know, would like to pull the plug because there's no money. But they can't make you blame them for stealing it from you, 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 you. Make no mistake, you, 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 you. You're the victim here. All the Congress and the Senate, the President, the Judiciary, everybody works for this thing behind the curtain. Not you. 
You were told you had democracy, a republic, representative government. You were told all these things. Reinforced in school as to what kind of reality you live in. Taught how to get along in the social structure in the world system. Taught how to do things uh, to get results so that you weren't left behind or a loser in life. Taught all the tricks of the trade so that you could at least have some decent kind of life. But there's not enough drugs and alcohol to wash it, to shove it, to shove it on down what really is going on. You can't shove it down. No matter how much you do, no matter how much golf you play, how many drinks you have, you just can't quite shove it down. You're all broken. So you collectivize as a hive mind to fix yourselves. That's what somebody online said, and I, I'm paraphrasing here, but that made a lot of sense to me. I, I, it's very understandable joining the world system and feeling like you're broken and a loser, and so you hook up with something that's a winner, and so everybody what works out works out for everybody, except for one thing. In so doing, God is, uh, the cord is severed. The connection with God is cut. In so doing, in just taking care of yourself, you destroy yourself. That's not fair, damn it. So you, God, are responsible. I didn't ask for this. I had to make lemonade out of lemons, is the argument of Al Pacino and the Devil's Advocate, of course. What a great movie that is. It lays it out perfectly from the other side's perspective. Um, did this help? I mean, it doesn't help knowing that you're on your way to annihilation. I mean, that doesn't help anyone. It makes it kind of hard to plan. I, I, I simply am going to continue on because I'm not going to say that it's a definite thing, annihilation. I'm just going to say, unless God intervenes, we're on our way to you know uh, a real fall here. But if God intervenes, maybe, you know, there's a way I got to, you know, I think we all have to, you know, keep your jobs, remain good stewards, do the best you can with what you have. And if you've got dwindling resources, do the best with what you have there. Uh, you know, um, there's never going to be anyone who's going to know exactly when the end is. You know, I guess if, they, if you knew that on Thursday of next week, that's it, the EM beginning with the EMP, rounding people up, putting them in camps and having a big nuclear thing, fish in a barrel. I guess at that point you could get the credit cards out and go on crazy, you know, and go on a trip or something or just uh, be, be gone when all this happens, you know, and be down in South America somewhere, or, you know, the North Pole or, you know, uh, you know, Bali or something. Anyway, I'm sorry. I I've just... You know, in my time upon the earth, I saw the Cuban Missile Crisis, the, um, you know, the scares during the Carter administration, the Cold War scare every day we had to have these, you know, it was like the specter of a nuclear bomb dropping, you know, when we had in the 80s Reagan and there was a couple of close calls then and like we almost went to DEF CON, whatever it is, and, and fired it up, you know. We were 15 minutes from a total nuclear holocaust during the Reagan administration, or, or less, or five minutes, or whatever it was, but something chilling. Now, here's what I want out of life. You know, for those of you who want to know what my motivation is, you know what my motivation is as a human being? I w like to not hurt other people. And I know that, you know, interact, you know, I have, and I'm not meaning to, and then, and people have hurt me and they didn't mean to. I understand that. Must forgive, and I forgive totally, and, and I hope I'll be forgiven. But it's kind of like a live and let live. You know, I want to, you know, live, find, I'm on a journey, you know, that is unfolding from my DNA. And that, it's not your journey. It's a, but I'd like to be at peace to, to, to see that through. I don't want to be here on the microphone. I've got a good mic. You know, I put a picture of it on my Facebook. I don't even know. I've got like three Facebook accounts. I, I'm, 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 I have ADD. <laughs> I must. I, I'm, I'm, God, you know, I, I've, 
I get mad and I, I deleted my whole SoundCloud page and then I started it up again. I don't know how many albums worth of material I have out there, but I just get, you know, I get like, everything sucks. I mean, I, I'll confess my sins. I, I get to where I think it all sucks and, you know, none of you appreciate anything I've done and, and sacrifices I've made. So the hell with you. I'm just going to down it all and walk away and just go off and be happy on my rock somewhere. And of course that's ridiculous and that's childish and that's stupid and I'm sorry. But I do go, it less than before, but I told Trish and I told Angie, our assistant of Corova Media, which were Corova Media LLC, and that's what the Zephyr Report is under that. So if, if um, you're mad at me for something, well, but just, you know, if you want to sue me for something, you got to go through this LLC thing. But anyway, you know, that's what the, um, um, the attorneys out there tell you to have, you know, some protection in case you say something that might irritate somebody, you know, you never know. But, uh, you know, barring that, um, I get, I guess I still have to heal from this thing of being, um, you know, feeling like people just want to dump me. And I think that was because that's what happened in my childhood. I mean, I was just, it was just like, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm some sort of problem. We got to dump him you know and so and my brother suffered the same thing I, it's just it i guess everyone in jesus or everybody that is with god or the god's lambs or whatever have have gone through that and um you know uh and even today it's like people look at my picture and they go and they they they, they conclude that i couldn't possibly be anything of god or some crazy thing I'll do. I do a silly poem in a, to a song or whatever. Just my freedom offends. But I've always been like no filter, you know. So I just am kind of what you see is, is me. Anyway, for those of you wondering about my motivation, my motivation is to, is to really at this point, is to enjoy the um, little things, you know, and people. Because I love people. And... You know, don't get me wrong. I, I get frustrated, I, you know, but most people that I've seen out there are good people. I haven't really, you know, it's just a very few bad apples that, that kind of ruin it for everybody. It's, it's in general, I, uh, you know, I love humanity in the sense that God made it. And so I love it. I love God. God He's created all this. So we have to, you know, make it work. I have, you know, people have gotten offended and they thought, well, you have a vendetta against society so you're say and it's like you mean for exposing the truth i have a vendetta no i didn't say well i want to punish society i'm saying if we don't straighten up the lord will that's not having a vendetta ladies and gentlemen that's warning out of love not out of hatred you know, I may hate the situation of, 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 of having to endure like movies that I just saw recently. You know, I don't like it, but I don't hate them. I don't hate Harvey Weinstein. I don't hate Paul McCartney. I don't hate any of these people. I'm just trying to say, but, but this is what they've done. This is what it is. And for doing that, this musician guy tells me I have a vendetta. He, he absolutely, when he hears the truth, whoever spoke it is evil was the point has some kind of vendetta and you have to be worried about him because he might go off. No, no, I'm more worried about this guy going off because he's not, he's living in a lie and anyone who tells the truth around him is accused immediately of being evil. So therefore, nobody can tell the truth about anything. We sweep it all under the rug. And that kind of guy is dangerous. And he's a Christian in a church owns a studio, but he's dangerous. And I never really addressed that when it happened because it traumatized me when he did that to me. He just visited, you know, and then he was just really evil, you know. And um, now I'm dealing with it. So, you know, I have no ill will, dude. I'm just sorry that, uh, that you know, that that's you. That's your nature, by the way. So, in other words, shoot the messenger has been what's made me pull my punches, because I wanted people to like me so that if you say anything real, then they want to shoot you. But without something real, I can't get through. So I'd like to be real. 
And if you want to try a game with me, I want to say, hey, you're doing a game with me. Is it going to lead to this or that? Oh, you you're evil, they will say to me. Because I, I knew you were doing a game and I called you on it. And so now I'm evil, but you're good playing a deceptive, you know, might as well being from the pits of hell game. Wow, is that backwards? So that's your typical Christian, ladies and gentlemen. That, that's, in fact, in the Christian world, that's like 99% of the people I've run into in the, in, the, in, the, in the religion world. And so no wonder they can make a mockery of it on the following and other places because, you know, nobody believes in it anymore because it's, it's been proven uh, to be a cover for, for unbridled evil, you know, uh, back in ancient times as well as today. So the people who are in that system go there to, in order to shove the truth under the rug, to feel better about the, what they've had to do to get along in society, and to go again on Monday morning. That's why they have services on Sunday, because they want the mind control to be fresh for Monday. If it was Saturday, you know, if it was the real Sabbath, they'd have too long to wait. It might unravel on Sunday. Their Jesus is not my Jesus. My Jesus is more than just some guy that left who's coming back at some point in a, in a human form to rule with a rod, little rod of iron on a throne in, in Israel. No, it's we're talking about a complete making of this entity human that God made into his image as the new Jerusalem. And that's Jesus to me, as much as uh, someone I can talk to, you see. And we're all part of that. So it's not like, you know, the, what they talk about is some guy, you know, they have some, the worst offender of, of all was the Jehovah's Witnesses who had the, the, the CIA propaganda artist who would drop those pamphlets and behind enemy lines or whatever. And um, they have like, you know, this comic book story. You know, it's much, much like the, the chick tracks that are, that are, you know, pedantic at best. And um, now they have some, you know, some utility, I guess. But see, here's the problem. If I watch Huckabee, I immediately want to worship Satan. <laughs> of course, I can't be fooled by that because you know, well, you're unwittingly worshiping him just by talking like this. Um, no, not really. Um, but I have no, ultimately, my future doesn't involve Satan. My destiny does not involve Satan. My destiny does involve, doesn't involve being cattle on the way to slaughter on this farm called Earth with these stupid oligarchs running things and they're not even home. They're just like programs. No, I'm not part of that. I do have a future though. And this is part of my development, being here and going through this process because the Lord wants me to. And I know that all his motives are born of love, not hate, of light and not darkness. And so I'm, I'm grateful. I would just like personally, I mean, if I have any motivation at all, I guess this is like the dinner table when I was always disinvited because, you know, you never know what he might say. You know, he'll, he'll blurt out something like, the emperor's naked. And they got so mad. But seriously, I go to school and learn about philosophy and then it would lead to a conversation much like we're having right now. And they're like, don't you know you have to cut it off at a certain point? No, I didn't. I never learned that game. That's a game, right? I never understood that. But in school, they teach you, you cut it off. In polite company, you do not talk about all these heavy things. Yeah, but see, one day, our survival as a human species may rely on that, speaking truthfully. And that day has come, ladies and gentlemen, at long last. And I say, hallelujah. Let it come. Let God's will be done. On earth, as it is in heaven, let him be the judge. Let's forgive as we are forgiven. 
Let us love one another to the best that we can. And when we step on each other's toes, let's let it go. And let's just realize it's not about us. It's about something greater. It's about him, about God's glory, about His, the creator and what he's creating. And we want to get in that flow. And all joy and all good things come to people that just relinquish themselves and give themselves to the creator rather than to themselves or to worse, to someone else or to the collective, even worse. The collective does not respect anyone who gives themselves to it. They want it, they want it badly, but when you give it to them at that moment, you're disrespected. And then they go, what have you done for me lately? You're going to have to earn it. And then they make you do a lot of bad things to, um, and before you know it, you're not even in, you're not even there anymore. You can't even, you know, you, your conscience is so seared. Whoever you were isn't there. Your soul is gone. And I'm trying to help people avoid that. Now, I did not mean to insult my former classmates by saying, you know, they're all zombies. Uh, but, you know, they went on and, and there was a point where I couldn't go on. And they went on and, and I, I was a failure. They were successful. You know, I had hit the wall because of the truth here got in the way. But they went on and embraced it and they all changed like they become successful people and they cut their hair and they got some dockers and a little shirt and they tucked it in and and off they went into bliss. And then us poets, there's other people I know in the arts that we're all, we all have the same thing happen to us. Yeah, it never did really work out. You know, um, it's much like, again, that guy in Full Metal Jacket. I mean, if, you know, there's a movie to rewatch. The Joker, played by Matthew Modine. I just saw him in a movie yesterday. I, I forget what it was called. But um, I'm still a movie buff, you know. I still, that, that was a childhood thing that my father got me going with early in life. And he used to want to get away from my mother. So he would take me and sometimes my brother to the movies to stuff that was way beyond our, our comprehension. We were just little kids, like five, right? Going to these adult movies, like would be R-rated movies. So he would do that. But, you know, it, it, what it did is it actually got me to see a lot of stuff and process things at a really early age before they could control me. So it was like, that was probably a mistake on his part. Maybe it was the movies that, that helped to open my eyes. But then, uh, well, anyway, I developed a... Uh, it was kind of like, well, they were an escape, but they're not an escape, you know? It's like the movie I saw just recently, the Osage thing, it was an escape, but not. it wasn't really an escape. It was like, here's a dysfunctional family, everybody hating everybody, everybody cheating on everybody, and everybody lying, and shoving it under the rug, and shoving it down with pills, and shoving it down with alcohol, and shoving it down with suicide. And then at the end of the movie, there's no hope. <laughs> just accept it. Thank you, Mr. Weinstein, once again, for your input. Thank you so much for your mind control. I don't need it. I reject it. I have hope. And even if, you know, we fight amongst ourselves, at the end of the day, we put it down because we have something greater. That's our hope. Not in ourselves, but in that thing that's greater than us. And that's why we succeed. Right? The relativists can't do that. They have to cling on to each other and whichever way the boat's going to sink they have to go with it and none of them can like none of them can turn off the nuclear war or a war of any kind you see they just they can't do anything they they just they're they're helpless let me explain something about the the power that be the powers that be are weak and helpless and hopeless and depressed and feeling right now like total failures and losing sleep at night because of what might happen to innocent people that the blood would be on their hands. They are just absolutely devastated in defeat today, now. And they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. So there's, I don't know how much liquor is being consumed in Washington, D.C., but I think it's got to be more than any place on, on earth, pretty much, except for... Uh, Maybe Germany. <laughs> 
France is going to have to take a back seat, same as the UK. I think I think Washington D.C. is where the people are, you know, and I I don't blame them. I you know, um, you know, I I think I I don't think I'd be here without alcohol personally. Many a time, it's been my medication of choice to get through a horrible time. And um, I'm not saying that's right, but I am saying that, uh, you know, that when devastating things happen, sometimes a little wine for your many infirmities can soothe, you know, can at least get you through to the next day where you can sort it out, right? Um, I'm not saying drunkenness, no, that's, that becomes a problem in itself. But uh, taking the edge off, y yeah, you know. Uh, my suggestion to anybody would be a glass of red wine and things look a little different and, you know, you may still be in sorrow, but uh, now a good meal, glass of wine, hit, go to bed, put on the radio, it'll be different tomorrow. It's like the Fleetwood Mac song, don't stop thinking about tomorrow. <laughs> you know, tomorrow's another day. There's been many times I've had to go to bed early just because I just had to get through it. There have been many, many nights where I just suffered at night alone and there was no help to the suffering except I just had to go to sleep. Many, many nights where I felt like I shouldn't be here. Many nights where I felt like I'm a burden of the earth. I would have been better off never being born. I have the, you know, I, I feel like I need to apologize for at my existence. Now that feeling is in my stomach. It's like inside my body. Oh, the, I, you know, and then eventually over a, a decade, it took to, for God to take that off. Now, of course, I don't have that thought at all. But I suffered with that for a long time. Feeling like, a, you know, like I don't belong here and, I shouldn't have come here and this is not something I can relate to and you know but but a lot of people they get those thoughts and then they commit suicide you know but I had to work through it and I was strong and I had to keep waiting for another day and eventually my day of healing came the Lord was good he healed me on that I realized I'm not only am I valid I made my place and I probably probably the influence of the Zeph report has done something to change the course of history um, just like anyone else has. In other words, I belong here as much as anybody else in that regard. But I feel like we've done some good things. And I feel like, you know, I'm really happy that the truth was spoken here. And whatever has caused a lot of these people in, in L.A. and Hollywood and Washington and wherever else to wake up, to understand that it's seen, it's exposed, it's in the open. And nobody wants to be on that train when it's all seen. For what it's like, you don't want to be a Nazi collaborator when it's all exposed at the uh, Nuremberg trials. You, you know, uh, you don't want to be there. You want to, you know, be no part of it. The same is true with the satanic mind control and, and satanic abuse and all the things that are part of this whole society. Nobody wants to be any part of it when it comes out in the, in the open. And when you have a war, it comes out in the in the open because you can, on the day of a really scary war, you won't find a Satanist. Maybe under the bunker somewhere, but the, as far as the common people, there are none on that day. Amen. So fear tends to really save people. So they've got to figure out a way to not have that happen because they don't, this is a farm, they're harvesting souls, so they got to make sure you don't repent so that they can get you upon death. Got it? Oh, make no mistake. What I just said there is is 100% real. Can you, are you going to take a chance that what I, that, and, and do you know better than me? Are you going to take a chance to run to the end and die? Even the thief on the cross was forgiven. All you got to do is say, look, Lord Jesus Christ, I, I know you're real. Look, God, I know in a crisis, I'm like, God, oh my God, help me, God. Oh my God, help me, God. Oh my God. So obviously, no, there's, you exist, God. I give you my life. Please deliver me out. I, I repent of the, the satanic, of the world system, of the rest of it, the mind control, everything. I repent. Just take me out of here with you, Lord, with you, with you. I want to go with you. And then I want to be a force for good in the world. I want to do good in this world. Not bad. 
See, that's just real, gut, almost guttural, but basic. That's all it takes. And believe me, most of you, you want forgiveness. You want redemption. You want to know that you're on the side of good here in these terrible days that have been brought about by a few selfish perverts. You don't want to haul their water for them anymore, do you? You know? And um, you don't care if you're punished. Look, they're not punished. They, they tried to punish, um, you know, people for being conservative in Hollywood, like people like Gary Oldman, a brilliant, you know, one of the best actors on the planet who didn't work for a long. He had to go to Spain to work. But now he's working all the time. In other words, it's, there's been a shift. It's okay to come out now, little children, and be who you are and quit hiding. Funny, they... The, you know, their their way has us as the ones who are hiding and them are the ones in the sunshine. That's not true. They're the ones in the darkness and we're the ones in the sunshine because we're um, amongst the sleeping. But we're awake and in the sun and shouting from the rooftops the truth. So who's in the sun now? They have to play a double-double deceptive game. I can say straight out the truth. Which one of us is in darkness, friends? The Beatles or me? I'm sorry, I've, I mentioned someone who said double entendres. Led Zeppelin or me? I'm just using cultural icons here because they've been known to say poetry that speak of something that they don't want to say directly out because they can't. Therefore, who's in the sunshine and who's in the darkness? Me or them? You or them? My friends, if you cannot speak truth, if there's a governor on your ability to think truth, that a lot of these people that are caught up in all that, they can't even think truth because they're afraid that someone will hear their thoughts and they'll be punished. That's what you're dealing with. You're dealing with that level. But who's in the sunshine? I am. The sun. Jesus, the sun, is in the sunshine. No Sorry, Soundgarden, he's not a black hole sun. Whatever you were thinking. You were in darkness. Not the sun. Thank you. You see what I mean when I see people turning it around backwards? And no, I'm the great musician, hey, I'm not against anybody. See, that's where you go, well, you have a vendetta. I have a vendetta. No, I like the truth because you know what? The truth sets us all free. I can't be free unless I can speak truth. If I have to start pulling my punches, then I'm a slave. I don't need to go bow down to somebody to become a slave. All I have to do is um, start lying. All I have to do is butter someone up. You know, I just want to serve you, not God. I'll carry your water for you. I'll do whatever you want me to do. I just want a place at the table. You know, and then behind the scenes, I'm going, I can't wait to, uh, you know, I, I'm going to bump that loser out of the way as soon as I get my shot. And that's basically it, you know. Is that the sunshine or is that darkness? I feel there that I'm making headway here. I feel like I'm making some headway here. I'm staying on the line here because I feel like this is like the suicide prevention line or something. I feel like I'm making some headway here. I feel like you are beginning to understand something. That you are not just because you feel like you were left out and, you know, lied to, left behind, unfairly accused. That happens to the people of God all the time. You get... They have to find someone to blame, so they're going to blame you. You're the loser, but you're actually the winner. See, they don't want the world to see them as losers. You, you know, that are, if you're with God, you just say, you know what? It doesn't, I've got the Lord, my eyes are on him. If you, whatever you define me as, loser, winner, up, down, sideways, who cares? Uh, it's much bigger than you, friend. Your opinion doesn't matter. Now, I know you got to be strong. But I'm weak. That strength comes from the Lord. I know I've got the Lord. See, that strength right there, that comes from him. Knowing I'm that solid, I am free um, 
to be ridiculed all day long by puny men because what they think doesn't matter anyway to anyone in any kind of reality. What they think and what they say is nothing. Their game is nothing. The fact that they, they, they say they win, they won nothing. Zero. Nothing. The only thing that you can win here is by losing. And in that sense, you win the kingdom by losing your vanity in favor of Christ, by giving up on your life to serve him, to let him take your life over and have him guide you in what to do, what to say. All these podcasts are, he guides me what to say. And if I don't say the right thing, guess what? Some weird supernatural thing happens and some technical thing will happen and it won't end up up there. You won't hear it because I'm not perfect. But if it does get up there, I, my ongoing prayer is, Lord, do not let me put up a bad word, but let it be something that will edify the people, not just, quote, our people, but all people. All who have ears, let them hear the truth that, you know, the, the, the religion of Christianity may be hopelessly flawed and corrupt, but Jesus is real. Let us separate the wheat from the chaff. The institutions of man are hopelessly corrupt, but principles of truth that are held in these institutions at times uh, are real. So one must cut the wheat, the institution, from the chaff, the truth, or rather the truth being the, uh, the thing you want and the chaff being the institution. Um, whatever. You understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> how I'm botching it. The truth sets us all free. Um, I'm sorry that the character and the leadership in Washington is, it's like little children selfishly arguing over a, a tetherball on the playground. I'm, it's so embarrassing to have, the people have to see that. But, They've got the news media to tell them that's not what they're looking at. So it's okay, right? That's the way people should behave. Uh, I guess the character and quality of politicians is very, very low, you know, or brings out the worst in people, let's say. Maybe they go there with good intentions, but they're not strong enough to fight off. Nobody is. Look, just go there and give yourself to the Lord and just ask the Lord to guide you and whatever you do and say and think. And you, know, don't, you can't mind what the news media writes about you. They're going to hate you if you're with God. If you have any, they don't mind if Bill Clinton quotes scripture or Barack Obama reads scripture when he goes to one of these funerals and cries crocodile tears. They don't care. They know that, you know, he's one of them, at least for now. But um, if you do it, you see, now, oh boy, you're going to be a, a terrorist before you know it in the news media. But it's okay if Bill Clinton quotes, hey, Janet Napolitano was reading from the book of Isaiah at the, uh, the Lundgren or the Lufgren or whatever that was in, in Tucson, Arizona, that shooting thing. And uh, she was quoting from the book of Isaiah. That's okay. There's no harm, no foul there. But if you quote from that book, you're in trouble. Can't you see how transparent it is? See, they know their own. And they know you're not one of them. So you could lose your job at Pep Boys at the, just working at the desk or the counter for no reason. You could. It could happen. You could then be called a loser and your mother could tell you, you know what, you can sit. The only reason you're sitting here at the adult is because there was no room at the kid's table when you're 35 years old. Yes, Absolutely. That could happen. That could happen very easily. <laughs> okay. Well, I think we've, I think we've done it. Um, uh, may this find you in good stead. May this Sabbath bring you nothing but the joy of the Lord and the focus on the Lord and the rest that you desperately need. And those of you who are looking for redemption, look no further than, you know, God's inside you as well as above you and beyond you. So you know him intimately well. Just go there and you'll find the peace, the love and the redemption and the joy that you have missed. But don't be surprised if you have to start telling the truth when inconvenient. There are times where everyone's going to ask you to go along with the 
you know, the little joke and you just go, <laughs> uh, sorry, it's a joke. Ah, you ruin everything. Yeah, you might have to be, get a better class of friends, you know. There is no hope in a collective of people keeping a lie or a secret society club that keeps a lie. There's no hope in that. There's no future in that. There's That way leads to destruction. It might seem right to a man at first, but it will eventually, here we are, lead to destruction. So the other thing is, Brzezinski and all the rest of the planners, they're like 50 to, to 100 moves ahead of you and ahead of the news media and ahead of what you think about what this world is. That's why best to cut to the chase. Because you know what? The world is just a reflection of our spiritual quality. With that, I bid you shalom.